Did you know that entitlement can sneak into our lives in ways we often don't recognize? It's easy to fall into the trap of believing we deserve special treatment or that our struggles are unique, especially in a world that seems to reward individualism. But if you want to cultivate deeper connections and lead a more fulfilling life, you need to address this mindset head on. In this video, we'll explore the concept of self-entitlement, how it impacts our relationships and personal growth, and most importantly, the stoic principles that can guide us back to a life of virtue and resilience. From recognizing entitled traits to embracing practical strategies for self-improvement, we'll unpack the wisdom of Stoic philosophers like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius to help us navigate these challenges. So, if you're ready to transform your mindset and cultivate a life filled with purpose, stick around as we dive deep into overcoming entitlement and building a resilient spirit. Let's get started. 1. Understanding Self-Entitlement Imagine walking through a vibrant park on a sunny afternoon, the laughter of children playing, the gentle rustle of leaves and the warmth of the sun fill you with a sense of joy and contentment. You feel connected to the world around you, appreciating the simple pleasures of life. But then, a thought crosses your mind. Have you ever encountered someone who seems to believe they deserve more than what they've earned? Perhaps you've seen someone complain loudly at a coffee shop because their order wasn't perfect. Or maybe you've heard a colleague insist they should get the promotion simply because they've been there the longest. This phenomenon, known as self-entitlement, can be a jarring contrast to that peaceful park scene, pulling you from happiness into contemplation. Self-entitlement is the belief that one deserves special treatment or privileges without having to earn them. It's as if life owes them something simply for existing. Picture Sarah, a software developer at her office, who believes that her skills automatically entitle her to the best projects and recognition, regardless of her performance. This mindset can be both confusing and frustrating for those around her. As we navigate our lives, we often grapple with the effects of entitlement, not just in others, but also within ourselves. This duality can evoke nostalgia, making us recall moments when we, too, may have felt that familiar itch of wanting more than we deserved. Think back to a time in your life when you felt overlooked or underappreciated, perhaps in school, at work, or even in relationships. It's a common human experience, and recognizing this can open the door to self-reflection. As we delve deeper into the nature of self-entitlement, a sense of curiosity arises. Why do we feel entitled? What drives this mindset in individuals who, at times, seem oblivious to the contributions of others? Is it a lack of understanding of the world's workings, or perhaps a deeper insecurity? These questions lead us to explore entitlement from both a psychological and philosophical standpoint. The teachings of Stoicism, which have stood the test of time, can help us unravel this intricate web of feelings and beliefs, guiding us toward a more balanced perspective. Are we willing to look at entitlement not just in others, but within ourselves as well? The journey of understanding self-entitlement promises to reveal insights that can transform our interactions with those around us. 2. The Impact of Entitled Behaviour Now, let's shift our focus to the impact that entitled behaviour has on our lives and communities. Picture this, you're in a team meeting, collaborating with enthusiastic colleagues who are eager to share ideas. The atmosphere is filled with energy, but suddenly one person dominates the conversation, dismissing others' contributions while insisting that their ideas are superior. The joy in the room begins to dissipate, replaced by an undercurrent of frustration. This moment captures the essence of how entitled behavior can sour otherwise uplifting environments. When self-entitlement is allowed to flourish, it creates a ripple effect that can diminish morale and disrupt team dynamics. 
Consider how Sarah's insistence on her own abilities affects her colleagues. Instead of fostering collaboration, her entitlement breeds resentment and competition, ultimately stifling creativity and camaraderie. We can all relate to environments where one person's entitled attitude makes it challenging to thrive. Whether in a workplace, a family setting, or even social circles, the presence of entitlement can lead to emotional exhaustion, creating a toxic atmosphere where individuals feel undervalued and overlooked. This leads us to a nostalgic reflection on our past experiences. Perhaps there was a time when you felt disheartened by a colleague's behavior, or maybe you've seen friendships fray because of one person's inability to acknowledge others. It's hard not to recall moments when entitlement overshadowed genuine connection, leaving us longing for authenticity and appreciation in our interactions. As we think back on these experiences, a curiosity ignites within us. What can we learn from these situations? How can we cultivate an environment that encourages mutual respect and acknowledgement? This exploration compels us to consider how we can address entitlement, not only in others, but also within ourselves. The journey to understanding the impact of entitled behavior reveals profound lessons that resonate deeply across our lives. 3. Seneca's Wisdom on Associations Now, let's turn to the wisdom of Seneca, the great Stoic philosopher, who offers valuable insights into how our associations shape our character and outlook on life. Imagine yourself in a bustling marketplace in ancient Rome, Vendors are calling out to passers-by, colors are vibrant, and the air is filled with the enticing scent of food. Among the crowd, you notice two traders. One is boastful and self-serving, while the other is humble and dedicated to her craft. Which one would you choose to associate with? In his letters, Seneca cautioned us to be mindful of the company we keep, suggesting that our associations can significantly influence our values and beliefs. Seneca believed that surrounding ourselves with individuals who uplift and inspire us is crucial for personal growth. As you ponder this idea, a wave of nostalgia washes over you. Perhaps you remember friendships or mentors who challenged you to be better, who encouraged your ambitions and celebrated your successes. These relationships stand in stark contrast to those that drain your energy or cultivate negative emotions. By reflecting on your past associations, you can identify which ones have truly contributed to your development and which have only served to amplify entitlement or negativity. As we consider Seneca's teachings, curiosity begins to spark within us. What does it truly mean to choose our associations wisely? How can we actively seek out those who enhance our character? It invites us to reflect on the current relationships in our lives. Are we surrounding ourselves with people who foster a spirit of gratitude and humility? Or are we inadvertently feeding our own sense of entitlement by engaging with those who demand special treatment and recognition? The exploration of Seneca's wisdom offers a roadmap for cultivating meaningful connections and reinforcing our commitment to virtuous living. 4. Recognizing Entitled Traits Have you ever found yourself in a conversation that feels more like a one-sided monologue? You know the type, someone who talks incessantly about their accomplishments, dismisses constructive criticism, and seems to have an uncanny ability to blame everyone else for their misfortunes. It can be amusing at first, but then frustration sets in. You start to think, why can't they see how their attitude affects others? This isn't just about being rude, it's a manifestation of self-entitlement, a mindset that many of us can recognize in ourselves or in those around us. Self-entitled individuals often exhibit specific traits that make their behavior apparent. First, they believe they deserve special treatment. Think about the last time you encountered someone who demanded attention or favors simply because they felt they were above everyone else. This expectation can manifest in small ways, 
like cutting in line or loudly insisting on their viewpoint in a group discussion, all while disregarding the thoughts and feelings of those around them. Next comes the inability to accept criticism. Reflect on moments in your life when feedback felt like an attack rather than an opportunity for growth. This can create a cycle where the entitled person not only resists personal development, but also fosters a toxic environment for others. The inability to admit mistakes is a telltale sign of entitlement. People will deflect blame onto colleagues or circumstances instead of taking accountability for their actions. Moreover, entitled individuals often possess unrealistic expectations of themselves and others. They assume that everyone else should cater to their whims without considering the consequences of their requests. This might resonate with you, especially if you've been in a group project where one member expected everyone to adjust to their schedule, disregarding the team's collective effort. Lastly, a significant trait of entitlement is the struggle with empathy. When you find it difficult to step into someone else's shoes or understand their perspectives, it can become challenging to build meaningful relationships. This lack of empathy is often rooted in a self-centered worldview, which can leave you feeling isolated and frustrated. Recognizing these traits, both in ourselves and in others, can be the first step toward addressing entitlement. It allows for a moment of reflection. Do we sometimes embody these characteristics? Are there instances in our lives where we have demanded more than we've earned? By acknowledging these behaviors, we can start to foster more genuine connections and move away from the self-entitled mindset. 5. Practical Stoic Strategies Now that we've unpacked the traits of self-entitlement, let's explore some practical Stoic strategies to navigate these challenges. Picture yourself in a busy coffee shop where you overhear a loud conversation. One person is complaining about their life, feeling victimized by every inconvenience. Instead of engaging in that negativity, imagine using stoic principles to transform the energy in the room. One essential strategy is to focus on what you can control. This stoic tenet, rooted in the teachings of Epictetus, reminds us that our reactions are ours to command. You can't control someone's entitled behavior, but you can choose how to respond. When faced with negativity, take a deep breath and ground yourself in your values. By maintaining your composure, you create a buffer against the chaos that others may bring. Another effective strategy is negative visualization. This might sound counterintuitive, but imagine losing what you cherish most. This practice helps cultivate gratitude and resilience. When you think about what you could lose, it allows you to appreciate what you have now. If a colleague takes credit for your work, instead of feeling robbed, remind yourself of the skills you possess and the effort you've contributed. This mindset shift can fortify your resolve and provide clarity in the face of entitlement. Additionally, practicing empathy is crucial. When you encounter entitled behavior, try to understand where that person is coming from. Perhaps they are grappling with insecurities or pressures you can't see. This doesn't excuse their behavior, but it can help you respond with patience rather than frustration. By extending empathy, you maintain your inner peace and potentially influence the other person to reconsider their actions. Setting boundaries is another practical strategy. When faced with entitled demands, assertively communicate your limits. Imagine a scenario where a colleague constantly interrupts you during meetings. Instead of letting it slide, calmly say, I'd like to finish my thoughts before we discuss your ideas. This sets a clear boundary without escalating the situation. Remember, being assertive doesn't mean being aggressive. It's about honoring your space while still being respectful. Lastly, cultivating a community of support can make a world of difference. Surround yourself with individuals who embody the virtues you admire. When you engage with those who inspire you, it reinforces your values and encourages you to rise above entitlement.
Think of friendships where mutual respect and appreciation thrive. These connections can serve as a refuge against the negativity of entitled individuals, providing the encouragement you need to stay grounded. By implementing these stoic strategies, you can navigate the landscape of entitlement with grace and resilience. Embracing these principles can transform not only how you respond to others, but also how you perceive yourself in the world. 6. Marcus's Stoic Techniques As we delve deeper into the world of Stoicism, let's take a closer look at the techniques of Marcus Aurelius, one of the most revered Stoic philosophers. Imagine yourself as a Roman emperor, responsible for an empire, and yet still grappling with the everyday trials of life. Marcus Aurelius faced significant challenges, from political intrigue to personal loss, and yet he found ways to maintain his composure and virtue. One of his key techniques was the practice of daily reflection. Marcus would set aside time each day to write in his journal, contemplating his thoughts, actions, and the lessons he learned. This simple act of self-reflection allowed him to stay grounded in his values and avoid the pitfalls of entitlement. Imagine doing this in your own life, taking a few moments each evening to reflect on your day. What went well? Where did you struggle? Did you feel entitled to certain outcomes? This practice fosters a greater awareness of your mindset and can guide you toward improvement. Another technique Marcus used was the concept of amor fati, or love of fate. This stoic principle encourages you to embrace everything that happens, good or bad, as a necessary part of your journey. Picture yourself facing a setback at work, a project you were passionate about falls through. Instead of spiraling into frustration, you remember that this experience is part of your growth. By accepting it as fate, you free yourself from feelings of entitlement and frustration, allowing you to move forward with newfound clarity. Marcus also championed the importance of community. He understood that surrounding yourself with virtuous individuals can elevate your own character. When you engage with people who inspire you, it becomes easier to let go of entitlement and focus on personal growth. Think of those friends or mentors who lift you up offering constructive feedback and encouragement. By investing in these relationships, you create a support system that nurtures your virtues and helps you resist the allure of entitlement. Additionally, Marcus often reminded himself of the transient nature of life. Reflecting on mortality, memento mori, helps us appreciate the present moment and the value of our actions. Consider how often we get caught up in daily frustrations, overlooking the beauty of life around us. By acknowledging that our time is limited, we can let go of petty grievances and focus on what truly matters, living a life of virtue and connection. Incorporating these techniques from Marcus Aurelius into your own life can help you cultivate a stoic mindset. By embracing reflection, acceptance, community and mindfulness, you can rise above entitlement and foster a sense of inner peace and resilience. 7. Self-Reflection and Personal Growth Moving into self-reflection and personal growth, let's pause for a moment and reflect on our own journeys. Can you think of a time when you felt frustrated with your circumstances, believing the world owed you something? Perhaps it was during a tough phase at school or in your career, where you felt overlooked or undervalued. It's a relatable sentiment, and the truth is, many of us have navigated these emotions at some point. Self-reflection is a vital component of growth. It allows us to take a step back and examine our thoughts, actions and motivations. Imagine setting aside a quiet hour each week to journal about your experiences. What challenges did you face? How did you respond? Were there moments where entitlement crept into your thoughts? This practice not only illuminates patterns in your behavior, but also highlights areas for improvement. The power of self-reflection lies in its ability to cultivate awareness. 
When you recognize moments of entitlement within yourself, you can confront them head on. Think of a time when you felt justified in your complaints. Maybe you believed you deserved a raise or promotion without considering the contributions of your team. By acknowledging this mindset, you can shift your focus from what you think you deserve to what you can contribute to your environment. Moreover, self-reflection fosters empathy. As you examine your own experiences, you begin to understand the struggles of others. Consider a situation where a colleague is frustrated and lashing out. Instead of dismissing their behavior, you can reflect on your own moments of vulnerability and recognize that everyone is navigating their challenges. This understanding allows you to respond with compassion rather than defensiveness. Personal growth is also about setting goals and working toward them. Reflect on your aspirations. What do you want to achieve? How can you align your actions with your values? Setting clear intentions can provide a roadmap for your journey. Whether it's improving your skills at work, nurturing relationships, or enhancing your emotional well-being, creating actionable steps keeps you grounded and focused. Remember, the journey of self-reflection and personal growth is ongoing. It requires patience and commitment, but the rewards are invaluable. By taking the time to explore your thoughts and behaviors, you empower yourself to rise above entitlement and cultivate a life rich in purpose and fulfillment. 8. Overcoming Personal Entitlement As we dive into overcoming personal entitlement, let's start with a moment of honesty. Have you ever caught yourself feeling like the universe should provide you with what you want? Maybe you've been overlooked for a promotion or felt underappreciated in a relationship. In these instances, entitlement can creep in, leading to disappointment and frustration. Acknowledging this feeling is the first step toward overcoming it. Overcoming personal entitlement begins with recognizing that worth is earned, not given. Think about moments in your life where you felt entitled to recognition or rewards without putting in the necessary effort. It's essential to understand that true fulfillment comes from hard work, dedication, and the ability to contribute meaningfully to your surroundings. By reframing your mindset, you shift from a perspective of entitlement to one of empowerment. Gratitude plays a pivotal role in this transformation. When you focus on appreciating what you have rather than what you lack, you cultivate a more positive outlook. Consider starting a gratitude journal where you jot down things you're thankful for each day. This practice shifts your focus from a mindset of scarcity to one of abundance, reinforcing the idea that you have much to offer and appreciate. Another powerful tool for overcoming entitlement is the practice of humility. Embrace the notion that everyone has unique strengths and challenges. This realization can help you see the value in others and reduce the tendency to compare yourself to them. When you approach life with humility, you open yourself up to learning from others and recognizing that everyone's journey is different. Setting realistic expectations is also crucial. Entitlement often stems from unrealistic demands placed on ourselves or others. Reflect on your goals and ensure they align with the effort you're willing to invest. Instead of expecting immediate results, commit to a process of growth and improvement. Remember that every achievement is a stepping stone, not a destination. Finally, seek accountability. Surround yourself with people who will challenge your mindset and keep you grounded. Friends, mentors, or even a support group can provide honest feedback and encourage you to stay true to your values. By fostering a community that holds you accountable, you can navigate moments of entitlement more effectively. Overcoming personal entitlement is an ongoing journey that requires self-awareness, gratitude, and humility. By embracing these principles, you can cultivate a deeper sense of fulfillment and connection in your life. 9. Building a life of virtue. As we delve into building a life of virtue, 
Imagine standing at the edge of a beautiful forest, the sun filtering through the trees, illuminating a path that leads to a fulfilling existence. This path is paved with virtues, qualities that not only enrich your life, but also positively influence those around you. In a world that often rewards entitlement and self-interest, the pursuit of virtue becomes a revolutionary act. Living a virtuous life begins with clarity about your values. What do you stand for? Take a moment to reflect on the qualities that matter most to you. Integrity, kindness, justice, courage. These virtues become your guiding principles, shaping your decisions and actions. Think of a time when you faced a difficult choice. Did you prioritize your values or did entitlement cloud your judgment? Embracing your core values can help you navigate life's challenges with confidence and purpose. Practicing virtues in everyday life can also enhance your relationships. When you approach interactions with kindness and understanding, you create an environment of trust and respect. Consider how a small act of kindness can ripple through your community. Whether it's offering support to a colleague or expressing gratitude to a loved one, these moments of virtue strengthen the bonds you share with others. Moreover, a life of virtue fosters resilience. When faced with adversity, grounding yourself in your values provides a strong foundation to weather the storm. Think about how you've handled challenges in the past. Did you allow frustration to consume you? Or did you lean into your virtues to guide your actions? Cultivating resilience through virtue allows you to approach obstacles with grace, transforming challenges into opportunities for growth. Setting intentional goals aligned with your virtues can further enhance your journey. Reflect on what you want to achieve and how it aligns with your core values. Perhaps you aspire to be more generous so you set a goal to volunteer regularly. By aligning your actions with your values, you create a sense of purpose that propels you forward. Lastly, remember that building a life of virtue is a continuous journey. It requires commitment, self-reflection, and a willingness to learn. Embrace the idea that setbacks are part of the process. When you stray from your values, Use it as an opportunity for growth rather than self-criticism. Each step, no matter how small, contributes to your overall journey toward a virtuous life. 10. Embracing Stoic Principles for Resilience As we wrap up our exploration of Stoicism and resilience, envision yourself standing on a cliff, gazing out at a vast ocean. The waves crash against the rocks, unpredictable and wild, much like the challenges life throws our way. Yet, as a Stoic, you are anchored by principles that help you weather any storm. Embracing Stoic principles means recognizing that while you cannot control external events, you have the power to control your reactions. This fundamental truth is liberating. When faced with adversity, instead of succumbing to frustration or despair, you can choose to respond with patience and understanding. Imagine a workplace conflict that leaves you feeling drained. By applying stoic principles, you can step back, assess the situation and respond with a clear mind rather than reacting impulsively. Another key aspect of stoicism is the practice of mindfulness. This involves being present in the moment and fully experiencing life as it unfolds. Picture yourself in a crowded subway, feeling overwhelmed by the rush of people. Instead of letting anxiety take over, you take a deep breath and center yourself. By focusing on the present, you can approach each moment with clarity, allowing you to navigate the chaos with resilience. Additionally, embracing the stoic practice of gratitude can profoundly shift your perspective. When faced with challenges, consider what you can learn from them. This mindset allows you to view obstacles as opportunities for growth, fostering resilience in the face of adversity. When you reflect on your experiences, think about how they contribute to your journey. 
This appreciation cultivates a sense of gratitude for the lessons learned, even in difficult times. Lastly, building a community of like-minded individuals who share your commitment to Stoicism can provide invaluable support. Surrounding yourself with those who embody resilience and virtue reinforces your own growth. Consider joining a local Stoic group or engaging with online communities that encourage discussion and reflection. Sharing experiences and insights with others can inspire you to deepen your practice and navigate life's challenges together. By embracing Stoic principles for resilience, you cultivate a mindset that empowers you to face life's uncertainties with grace and fortitude. This journey is not about perfection, it's about progress and the continuous commitment to living a life rooted in virtue. As we wrap up our journey through the complexities of entitlement and the timeless wisdom of Stoicism, it's clear that the path to personal growth and fulfillment begins with self-reflection and a commitment to virtue. Remember, every step you take towards recognizing and overcoming entitlement brings you closer to a life defined by integrity and resilience. If you've made it this far, drop a hundred in the comments. This shows you're part of the 0.01% who truly finishes what they start. If you're serious about transforming your life and embracing a mindset of growth, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Join us as we continue to explore the tools and philosophies that empower us to live our best lives.